Okay, so this segment is going to be my testimony segment. And I'm sharing this testimony with the women of the world because I know that I'm not the only one that experienced um, fibroid issues. And so, you know, I, I, I just feel it's something to share. So in the beginning, oh no, close to the end, going into the beginning of 2021, you know, I noticed when my cycle started coming on that I started bleeding really, really heavy. And I didn't think nothing of it, you know, uh, because at the end of the five to seven day period, it would go off like it normally does. So this one month, like I said, I was like changing pads at least probably two an hour, you know, because it was just that saturated. And I thank God at this time that I was working from home. So it wasn't like an inconvenience with me at work running back and forth to the bathroom and worrying about messing up my clothes and things like that. So, you know, it happened once and then the next few months would have been regular and then it'll happen again. And, you know, before you know it, probably like three, three times out of, out of the year, I had menstrual cycles that were like really, really heavy and it will last like five to seven days when normally it would last like four to five days. So during the time of uh, 2021, I went into the hospital once. Um, I was told that I was slightly anemic. You know, they told me about taking vitamin supplements and things like that. And I went on about my business. You know, during the course of the times in between the menstrual cycles, I was suffering from, you know, bad headaches. Um, my blood pressure was fluctuating. Um, I had to go to the clinic, you know, to check that out because I thought, you know, I paid attention to that because it like got really, really bad with the palpitations in my chest. And then, you know, me feeling like I'm floating while I'm sitting at my desk working. So went to the clinic. Well, actually, I went to the clinic one day. They told me about high blood pressure. Then I had to monitor for the next week. Then I had to come back. And, and from in between the time that I had to go home and monitor my blood pressure, I took some herbal remedies. Um, I took some garlic, some chamomile, some valerian, and I took it faithfully. And so the next week when I went back to the doctor's office, you know, my blood pressure was normal. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward to this year, 2022. In January 2022, seen nothing of my menstrual cycle. So, you know, I was a, a little bit alarmed. If you get, if you women know what I'm thinking, I was a little bit alarmed. But the next month coming into February, there was this downpour. And when I say it was a downpour, it was worse than in, it was worse than the last ones that I seen in 2021. So the first one, it lasted February, the month of February, it, my cycle lasted for 30 days. So can you imagine often, and it wasn't even off and on, it was like heavy and light, but it first started off heavy. And I guess when it got to the end of, at the time, me not knowing, probably draining my body of blood, it got light, but then it went off. So, you know, I was feeling, my body was feeling some type of way. And no, you know, most people would say, well, why didn't you go to the hospital? Or why didn't you go to the doctor's office? I'm not one big on going to the doctor's office. You know, I'll read and I'll research, uh, I'll read and I'll research certain things. And I believe in herbal remedies. So I'll put those to use. And if it gets really, really bad, then yeah, I'll go to a doctor. So February passes, March comes in, we have the same thing that happens. But this time it went for 20 days. So at like the 20 or uh, the 20th day, I was feeling really, really bad because it was like I couldn't walk from my car to my office to work because now I'm working, it's 2022, I'm back in the office again, you know, in a totally different state, but just so happened that office has, happens to be a doctor's office. So 
I park in the garage and where I have to go to get to my office is like not even a full block, a block and a half. So I used to be dead tired and out of breath by the time I got from the first floor of the garage to my office. So I started, well, it was a concern, but when I took my herbal remedies, you know, I was fine, but it seemed like it was progressively getting worse. So um, one day I felt so weak and so bad that I couldn't even get out of bed. So I had to call in to work and I told my manager what was going on. And she scheduled me an appointment to see one of the nurses there. And I did some blood work. And this is going into, this was the next month going into April of 2022. So the blood work happened and you know, we had to wait for the blood work to come back and I'm sitting at my desk working and the nurse comes in looking at me, asking me, how do I feel? And I'm like, I feel fine. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'll, I, you know, I'll be all right. As long as I was relaxed and taking it easy and wasn't overexerting myself, I was fine. But if I got up to go like to the restroom or to go anywhere else, it's like I was out of breath and it's like I ran a marathon. So she had some papers in her hand and she was like, you need to go get a blood transfusion. And I'm like, why would I need to go get a blood transfusion? She was like, your iron is like really, really low. It's critical low. It was at like, you might have a heart attack and might not make it through low. So I went over to the hospital um, and I, I should have had my papers here, but I, I guess I'll share them with you guys later. But I went over to the hospital, which thankfully, thank God, it was right across the street. So I didn't have to go that far, you know, based on where I worked at. You know, I was able to get myself to the car, go to the hospital and admit myself for the blood transfusion. Um, my blood, um, just to go back a little bit, my blood hemoglobin or the iron was at like a four. And I, that was from what I was told or from what I'm understanding, like extremely, extremely critically low. You know, things happen, palpitations, heart attacks, death. You know, so I was, uh, it was April, I believe April 20th, I went into the hospital. I got the blood transfusion. I was reluctant on getting the blood transfusion because one, I'm a Christian. Two, you know, I know some things, but I don't know a lot of things about the Bible, but you know, there are things about the blood that I'll probably get in into other videos that is like, okay, God, you know my heart, you know, I really don't want to do this. You know, I had to pray for him to give me the courage to go through and to get this blood infusion, right? So I had to do some praying on that. And it's another testimony about that hospital visit. I'll tell y'all about in another video. How Anyway, <clears throat> I was in the hospital from April 20th and I got out the 22nd. Full blood, blood transfusion. Got my body filled back up. So uh, while I was at the hospital, I did an ultrasound. And then this is when I was diagnosed as having uterine fibroids. And I didn't have just one or two fibroids. I had many fibroids from me laying there on the table, looking back at the screen and looking at the lady doing a little thing with the probe off of my nana. It was like, it wasn't pretty. You know, the, the measurements, the points, the clicks and all that stuff she was doing over. I'm like, okay, that's a lot. So they was like, well, the uterine fibroids is what, what's got you bleeding like this. You know, they go through rigmarole telling you how to take care of yourself. They don't know where it comes from, but, you know, you got certain options you can treat. You can treat with medication, um, some kind of procedure where they go up in there. The ones that they can get to, they burn out. Anyway, I wasn't interested in none of that because... Like I said, I'm more of a natural remedy type person and I really don't like going to the hospital unless, you know, it's really, really critical. And once they diagnose me and tell me what's going on, then I know how to come back home and do what I need to do. So um, I left out of the hospital, came home. I was fine. Um, I started doing some research on medications, fibroids and things like that. So. I already um, got like an arsenal of medication, not medication, I'm sorry, an arsenal of herbs and spices because of the business that I own. So I started pulling everything that I had that pertained to me cleaning my blood, 
cleaning my body, cleaning the detox, detoxing my system and then building my system back up and then maintaining my system while repairing my system. So I started taking probably maybe not that week. Uh, I admit I was a little lazy, but like the week after I started taking the herbal supplements, I started taking the herbal spices and things of that nature. And, you know, for the Christians out there, you know, that will understand where I'm about to go. I did a whole bunch of fasting and praying, you know, because I, like I said, didn't want to go back into the hospital to have another blood transfusion. I didn't want to die. Don't want to die because I know God, I haven't did all that God would have me to do as of yet. Um, so, you know, there are some things in the Bible and I'll discuss that at a later time too, that pertains to the healing of the body. So this is, you know, what I was standing on. I was believing in what the word of God had given me about the herbs and the medicine for the healing of the body. I went, I did my research and I went and got the herbs that pertain to my specific condition. And I started repairing and replenishing my body. So this is why I want to share this testimony with you guys today, because, you know, some people, if you have to go to the doctor, you go to the doctor. I don't take anything away from the medical community, community because God has blessed them with an immense capacity to hold a lot of knowledge in their brain and to help people. You know, the medical community don't like to say healing, but that's really what it is. You repair, if you're repairing your body, you're healing your body. So, but they don't like to, you know, put that out there. They want to help you and consult you and get you the best care, you know. So if you have to go to the doctor, you know, it's on you, but you use discretion, you know, when you go to your doctors. Again, that's another story. So, um, April, May, coming into the month of my cycle, you know, I wasn't scared or fearful, but I was like curious as to how this was going to play out being that I was taking the herbal supplements because I know what the research said. I know what the study said. And most of all, I know what my God said about the healing of the body and coming to him, you know, humbling myself in prayer and supplication. So May came, my menstrual cycle was not even five days long. I was happy. Woo so I got on my medication, not my medication. I keep calling it. Well, it is to me a medication, but it's not a pharmaceutical. But I got on the herbs. I, I, I got on them harder. And what I did, I started being that there's a wide variety of herbs and spices out there that can help to replenish and repair and detox your body. You know, it's like you have the option to switch up and change so that you don't get bored with taking the same old, same old um, herbs or spices. So, um, June came around when June came around the same thing. We got a five, maybe four day cycle. So I'm speaking, I'm sharing this video with you and the remedies that I've taken as a testimony and as proof that, you know, there are remedies out there that work. You just have to find the ones that are right for you and your schedule, you know, because some, some of us are busy, 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 busy as to where we can't stop every three and four hours to drink some tea, you know, or to put a powder in a smoothie and make a smoothie or make a juicy or some, a juicer or something like that. So what I did when I started with the healing of my body, I took, I took the tea, I took the powders, I took the capsules. And basically, I made all of them. So while I was at work, you know, I had my tea with me, you know, and the tea was like something of an immediate thing. So you can get it in your body and get it working and to circulate. And then your capsules are when like you're on the go and you can't, you know, take the time to nourish your body for that, like the, the sipping on tea or a juice for like 10 to 15 minutes to get it through your body and things like that. So... Yeah, that's it. Um, in the other parts of the video to come, uh, I don't know if it's going to be the same day or a different day, so you might see everything change up. But I'm going to explain to you uh, the herbs I took and what quant the quantities that I took. 
the foods that I did take and the foods that I absolutely stayed away from, you know, because it's a process. I would rather spend money on, you know, herbal supplies and not supplies, herbal, herbal remedies, I guess, herbal herbs. <laughs> I'd rather spend money on herbs and spices and, you know, then to have to spend money on going to the doctor's office, um, be it your primary care doctor and or a specialist and or an outpatient facility, you know, racking up charges when at a fraction of the cost, you can treat your body and bring your body back to, I don't know, what is it, home, home, homeostasis or something like that? You know, bring it back to the normal operation of things. So what I'm gonna do in, I guess, a different part of this video, maybe at the end or maybe even a, in a separate video, I'm gonna go to my doctor. This is gonna be the second visit to the doctor's office that I work at. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna get another blood work done, another um, some more labs done to see where from then until now, where my um, hemoglobin and everything is at, the iron and all that, because I've been taking the supplements, so I know it's had to move up, you know, um, from then until now, because I do feel 100% better, you know, and I'm able to go back to the gym. I'm able to actually walk from my car to my office and not feel like I ran a marathon, you know? So, and a lot of women, I, I, with the research that I've been doing and looking, you know, at over YouTube and different, you know, looking at different stories, people writing, people are actually suffering from fibroids and they're looking for remedies that aren't so, is it, what's the right word, invasive? You know, they, they don't want surgeries. I know I don't want surgeries, you know, and if there's a way that you could repair and replenish your body while shrinking the earth, while shrinking those fibroids to little or nothing, then why not go for it? So I believe with everything that I share with you, you know, that it will be of effect to you. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are, they're marketing you know, herbs that they have the remedy to fibroid health, but I haven't seen any testimonies. I see people get in front of the cameras and they're talking about how, you know, this will help fibroids and you take this and, you know, you're going to be all right. Um, but you haven't given me a personal testimony. So I'm like, I need to see a testimony. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see somebody who's been through it and who's actually, you know, they've been through it and now they're on the other side and they have a story to tell you like, hey, this particular brand does work. Now I have seen, you know, the customers giving testimonies, but then my thing is, are these really customers? Is it somebody's best friend that's writing a review or is it your cousin or whoever? Maybe it's your uncle posing as a female writing a review. I don't know. You know, I would like to think that people wouldn't lie and do that, but you never know these days. For, for a coin, people will do and say just about anything. So, you know, I want to come through the products that I push. You know, I want to come through with a good heart, you know, for those that I have um, taken and experienced. I just want to share my testimony that, hey, even though I know we look at the research and we look at testimonies from people out there, but I've been through this and it really does work. So um, I got about two more videos that I could possibly share with you about um, high blood pressure, headaches, and the, well, the fibroids is this one. So about two more videos and then, you know, I'll go ahead and start giving you information about other herbs and spices that are supported by clinical studies. And these clinical studies, I, these people don't have anything to gain. You know, they're just out there, they're doing the work and they have to put those little FDA disclaimers on there. You know, when I know deep down, they know what these herbs, these spices, 
the bar, the roofs, and when they know what all of this stuff can do, but they are just limited because of FDA requirements. You know, they don't, you know, FDA, I, I believe the FDA would come after you if you staking claims of, you know, a, a, a tree or an herb or something has healing properties. So what I want, what I'd like you to do is like the video if it's helpful, subscribe to the video, and I guess refer any friends that might have health conditions or concerns, you know, and they want to hear, you know, remedies, you know, on how to replenish their body, how to repair their body, and how to help expel and get the toxins and that we ingest be it air through air of the food on a daily basis you know because i firmly do believe i'm not gonna say heal but you guys are gonna know where i'm coming from if you detox your body and get all those um those free radicals i don't know I, forgive me because all the terminology i'm not there with it but if you detox your body getting all the foreign substances out of your body and then you start to replenish the essential minerals and vitamins in your body that are essential to life, your body's going to heal itself. Point blank, period. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that the medicine will heal you. But what I'm saying is the medicine, the medicine, the herbs, I keep saying medicine, I'm sorry, the herbal supplements and the spices will help to replenish, repair, and eliminate toxins out of your body. And once these three things are done, your body's going to do what God originally created it to do, and that's to repair itself, bring itself, the fluids and everything back up to where it needs to be so that it can function properly in an alkaline state, therefore, you know, eliminating and getting out ridding itself of any possible, you know, bacteria, viruses that may try to call cause illness, illnesses. You know what I mean? I don't know. I guess my mouth getting dry. I guess it's time to end this video. But thank you for listening to my testimony. And now we're going to go into hopefully the second segment of this. I'm going to go into telling you about the herbs that I took, you know, for the eliminating of substances out of my body for the replenishing of the vitamin a vitamin c vitamin b um iron magnesium zinc iodine all of that good stuff that our body needs to properly function on a day-to-day -day level i'm going to give you information about that we're not going to go into details i'm going to keep it simple because you know everybody don't like complex i don't want to bore you and i don't want to put you to sleep but you know, if you're suffering from a health condition, you know, you, you're not going to go to sleep because it's going to be some information that you're going to need to know, you know, in order to help make better decisions either on your own or when you talk to your doctor, you'll know what questions to ask your doctor as it relates to your health. And then you can go forth with a conscious decision on, you know, how to help get care or how to take care of your body. So, yeah. That's it. Now see you in the next segment. Welcome back everybody. And this is another part of the video um, that I'm gonna discuss the herbs that I've taken or that I'm currently taking, you know, to help my body um, as it relates to the, the fibroid issue that I was facing earlier this year. Um, and you're gonna see me, I'll periodically be looking down just so that I can touch on each and every herb that you know I've taken. You know, I'm not gonna go into details because the research is already out there. It's already been written. And all you need to do is, you know, um, hopefully at the end of this video, well, not hopefully, at the end of the video, I would, see if I could put down some research resources to where I got my information from. But it's literally all over the internet. All you have to do is just Google 
the herb or the spice and you'll get information on it you know because everybody and their mother and brother is you know advertising and providing information as it relates to her herbs and the healing of the body so now when i got out of the hospital if you looked at my testimony portion when i got out of the hospital you know one of the first things i did was made me a little concoction on you know cleaning you know my blood out because you know in my mind I got somebody else's blood mixed in with a little bit of blood that I had left coursing through my veins. So even though the hospitals say that they clean and filter the blood that they transfuse, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm, you're probably just telling me this to put me at ease. This is what I'm thinking in my head. You know, but then again, it'll be what reason would they have to lie? I don't know. I didn't want to chance it. So... What I did, I came home and um, I took some burdock and some licorice. What else did I mix together? Uh, it's a few. What I'll do, I'm going to put, um, when I edit the video, you're going to see the actual herbs that I put together. But just to name a few, you know, I put the burdock, the licorice, and the elderberry together. And I drunk that as a tea maybe one to two days you know, to help, you know, cleanse my body out. You can drink it longer if you like, but it depends on how much you drink it the first one to two days. You may not need to go past that or past the third day. So definitely for sure to cleanse out your blood, you know, you can drink the, you can make a, I suggest tea first, first and foremost, so you can get it in your system and get it circulating. So you can do the burdock, elderberry, you can do uh blessed thistle, and that'll help uh, and detox your body. I forget the other one, but it's going to be in the text that I'm going to put across the screen. So that'll give you everything that you need if you need it. And so after um, I did the blood cleansing and the purification, you know, um, I started drinking nettle. I started drinking chaparral. And I had like some ginger tincture. So throughout the course of the day, I didn't drink it all at once, but the nettle and the chaparral, those are teas. So you can either mix them or you could drink them separately, but that helps to bring your iron levels up. So I was focused on how do I bring my iron levels up and how do I keep them up? You know, since that what the iron and then the other minerals help to help you to produce hemoglobin. So that's what, you know, when you have fibroids, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that your body's at full capacity. So if you do experience an episode of bleeding during your cycle or not even during your cycle, just bleeding before your cycle, because I was bleeding so much, I had got confused as to which was which. I didn't know if it was my cycle or if it was this because they ran over. But anyway, I don't want to talk your head off, but nettle and chaparral would help you to build your blood. And then for the times that I couldn't get to make tea, I had deep juice. <sighs> nasty. You talking about nasty? Beet juice is nasty, but it's healthy. The chaparral and the nettle, it don't taste pleasant, but it is healthy for you. It helps to bring your body into an alkaline state, plus it helps to replenish your body while helping you eliminate toxins from your body. Now, they don't just serve the purpose. One thing I like about herbs and spices, even though we can take it for one thing, it's still helping you in the overall replenishing of your body. So even if I'm taking it to help build my iron, it's helping to give me magnesium, it's helping to give me iodine, zinc, and all that good stuff that I need in my body. And then whatever my body doesn't need, AKA whatever your body doesn't need, if you're taking it, it's gonna, exp it's gonna eliminate it out. It's gonna push it out the body. You know, so you don't have to worry about, you know, some people say, you know, if you take too much iron, it could be toxic. It's probably so. I haven't did the research on it, but I'm only speaking on my body and what my body can handle. And I put that, I put this body to the test because I didn't want to go back to the hospital. So moving right along, um, I took garlic. Garlic, you know, it has um, certain properties in it that is for heart health. You know, I thank God that when they did the test in the hospital, they told me that, you know, you know, none of my organs were damaged because my blood was just that low. 
you know, as to where it could have started damaging my organs. And then we'd had some problems, you know, other problems that we had to um, think about, but that didn't happen. But anyway, I thought about it. So I started taking garlic. I started taking ginger. Um, and there were some other herbs. Oh, I made me some kale supplements. And then I made me some Irish sea moss supplements and I had ashwagandha. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not when you space it out over the days and over a period of time. You know, it's not really a lot. You just constantly keeping something coming in your body, replenishing and pushing out and repairing. So you just think about it that way. All right, here we go. Another day, another segment. As you can see, stuff has changed. Anyway, so within this segment, I'm going to talk about how I treated my body with herbal remedies uh, for, for fibroids. And basically, the symptoms that I experienced earlier this year, I no longer experienced them. So even though I don't have any clinical evidence that the fibroids have gone, they've shrunk. I'm believing in my Lord Jesus Christ that they've already been remedying, they've been taken care of based on how I feel. And I feel good. Like I said in the um, past video, I'm able to walk around the park. I'm able to walk, you know, a good distance without feeling like I've ran a marathon and my heart's not beating in my chest and in my ears. Because believe you me, this year, I had it bad. I had it bad, but I wasn't claiming it and I wasn't dwelling on it. I got down to business. After I found out what my issue was from the doctor, I came home, I looked for the, herb, the herbal remedies that you know are out there to treat the body and I got to work. So this is why you know I felt like I need to get in front of the camera, talk to some people and share the information that I have with you because I know I'm not the only one going through it. I, I mean, I looked at the internet, I did the research, I read the stories. There are some people going through some things. And I would say that this is the only herbal remedy out there. There, there are, how do I say it? Not to say that this is the only way you can treat yourself. There are various ways that you can treat yourself uh, for fibroids and have a successful outcome, I think. You know, because there's so many stories out there. You don't know who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth, but you're suffering from something and you don't have time to to sit and, I guess, ponder on who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth. So what I did, I went to the doctors. No, no. So what I'm about to give you is I did all of these things, but not in a specific order that I'm going to convey it to you. But if I had it to do over again, which I don't want to do it over again, but if I had it to do over again from the time I found out that I was suffering from fibroids, I would have treated myself in this order. Not to say it would turn out any different. It may have turned out better. I, I don't know. It may have given you quicker results. I'm not for sure, but I, I, I do know that everything I'm about to convey to you is something that I did to treat my body. And now I'm back to regular menstrual cycles or going through menopause or some, I don't know. But the cycles, I haven't been, I haven't bled over five days since the month of May. As to where prior to, if you looked at my testimonies in the part in the first part of the video, I was at like 30 days, 15 days, and 20 days with my cycle, I believe. Okay. So the first thing that I would suggest doing when you've actually been to the doctor, you've confirmed that you have fibro a fibroid or fibroids in your uterus. The if you're not going to seek 
I guess, other means of taking pharmaceuticals or doing whatever surgical procedures there are out there. If you're going to do home remedies, what I would suggest, what I did, okay, I first did a blood cleanse. There are so many herbs out there that will cleanse your body of pathogens and toxins and things of that nature that, you know, you have to do the research and decide what's affordable and what you think may work with your body. Um, I have not, I mean, there are some people that may have allergies, but it's up to you to do the research on the herb to find out if it's something that you may be allergic to or if it's something that you can take or if you're taking other medications, then you may want to consult your doctor to find out, you know, is it okay for you to take certain herbs along with the medications that you take? Completely up to you. All I'm doing is just giving you the information um, concerning the herb, herbs that help me and my body because I'm not taking any medications. I, I'm not a med medication type of girl. I mean, the most I took over the years is maybe an aspirin here and there. And then even two doctors, not going to say any names, not going to say any hospitals, but two doctors that were non-American told me not to take aspirin. They didn't go into details and I know they didn't want liability of certain things, but I was told try to stay away from aspirin and then was given alternative information. However, that may be a that that's a question you definitely can, you know, pose to your doctor. Are aspirin good and why? I don't know. But so a blood cleanse. I sit at my desk all day. So I'm able to do, I guess, tea therapy. I don't know what they want to call it. A tea tox, tea therapy, anything like that. Uh, morning and lunchtime. So I'd have like six to eight ounces of tea. And then I'm snacking on healthy foods while I'm at my desk. So, and these are all foods that help to nourish your body and help to expel any toxins that you have. So the first herb that I had is burdock. And actually, I think I mixed a few. No, 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 no. Burdock is one of the herbs I took, but spirulina. If any of you taste the spirulina, it doesn't taste that nice. But, you know, you read all the benefits. It's got chlorophyll and um, it's high in iron. It's a seaweed. So, you know, you know, iodine and all that stuff is good for you. Just do your research on the herbs and you see the health benefits that it have in reference to the overall body functions. So I took spirulina, I mixed that with like any juice that I can imagine because I know it doesn't taste that good, but I'm looking at the mission that I'm trying to accomplish, which was to heal the physical aspect of my body, my uterus, you know? So I knew I had to build up iron and things like that. And I also knew I had to cleanse my body. So spirulina was one of the um, herbs that I took. I took burdock. I took elderberry, I took licorice, I took, I didn't take blessed thistle, but blessed thistle is one of the ones that you could take. I took ginger, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of the others that I took. You could do the research, but basically look for herbal remedies that will help to cleanse your, your liver your um your circulatory system as a whole it really is going to clean your whole body because you're taking it and it's pulling it's once it gets once these herbs get in your body it's going to do what god intended for it to do it's going to go where it needs to go it's going to pull out what it needs to pull out it's going to repair what it needs to repair and then it's going to replenish what it needs to replenish. Or well, I said it backwards. I should have said replenish first and then repair. But they're going to do, you just need to know what to take, how often to take, when to take it, and if you can take it. So the next thing that I did, uh, being that when you bleed a lot, you lose a lot of blood. And then you kind of deplete your stores of iron that you have in your body. So iron supplements, iron supplements are big and you don't only take them while you're on your cycle. You try to take them at least three weeks out of the month before your cycle comes on. So you would have built up the iron stores in your body just in case, you know, it's one of those months to where you bleed five, seven or 10 days. 
And by the way, I don't suggest any, by the way, it was by the graces of God that I bled 30 days and was able to live to tell the story, go to the hospital and things like that. So for anybody, you know, I guess you know your body, so I won't even go there. But if I had to do again, probably by the 12th or the 14th day, I'll probably head out and say, hey, it's happening again, which I don't expect it to happen again because I'm not even speaking that into existence. Iron supplements, there are many. The iron supplements that I took were nettle, chaparral, beets. Beets was the biggest one. I had that at my at first, uh, before I went to the, the juice, I had the actual beets that I would slice up into thin slices and I would put them in a little container and I'd bring them to work. So after I got the transfusion and I was at work, I had like a half a beet a day and this was for about two weeks. So two weeks, a half a beet a day is like two and a half beets per week. You might as well say. So that's enough to help get up your iron. You know, I know they say that you're only supposed to have so many grams a day, but think of it like this. Whatever you ingest, we'll use beets as an example. Our body would only take so much a day to get it to where it need to be to replenish what needs to be replenished. And then anything in excess, your body's gonna expel it. No, no foul, no, no harm, no foul, or some kind of way to say that. But anyway, so don't worry about when you're eating foods and some herbs that, oh, well, it's going to be too much. Well, your body's going to take what it needs and it's going to spit out this, what it don't need. And then all you have to do is just basically re worry about replenishing it later or consistently replenishing it so that your body can do what God originally designed it to do repair itself if you're and, and when i say repair itself if you haven't damaged anything and if it's your condition or your situation is not too far gone your body would be able it should be able to replenish and to repair itself in uh yeah it should be able to replenish and repair itself providing you with the essential nutrients to um function to live, pretty much. I took watercress. I took spearmint. Watercress is high in vitamin C and that's high in iron. It's high in a lot of other stuff too, but this is one of the herbs that I found out during research that would help to treat fibroids. So watercress, uh, stevia. I recently added stevia to my regimen because stevia is sweet and it takes the place of sugar for me when it comes to the herbs. I, I either use honey in my herbs or I would use sugar, not sugar, I'm sorry. I would use stevia because of the taste and it works. I use sea moss, I use kale, I use ashwagandha, I use moringa. And it sounds like a lot, but it's not really a lot because during the day, you know, I don't eat like three meals a day. And when I do eat, every meal isn't like a vegetable or fruit and meat and the other stuff. It's not like all of the requirements on that little pyramid that we have, the little food pyramid. So I look at the herbal supplements as giving me what I don't take when I eat. So in moderation, coupled with a lot, a lot of quality water, this is how I take these supplements. For some, it may be too much, but I'm sitting here today as living proof that even though I took, I took all, I take all of these supplements, my situation has changed and has changed dramatically. Okay, so the next thing that I took was for, I did some research about the shrinking of the uterine fibroids to little or none. There are a lot of herbal medicines out there, herbal remedies out there that is backed by science to show that when taken over a period of time and consistently that they will shrink the size 
of the fibroids. And from my understanding, when the fibroids shrink, I guess that decreases your blood, the, the, the flow of blood. You know, uh, the bigger they get, the more susceptible you are to bleed and to bleed very, very heavily. But when they shrink, you have little to no bleeding, you know, from the fibroids and you're only experiencing your menstrual cycle or there may be a little bit, but it's not going to be as much. So, Rishi, I call it the king of herbs and I believe the internet and people who've done research call it the king of herbs as well. Um, the king of mushrooms, the king of medicine, herbal medicine. I don't know. Anyway, Rishi is one. The, that all the medicinal qualities I, I know vitamin D and then basically what the science says so what what I intend on doing is after I finish the video I'll put some links down in the bottom of the not the comments but you know down there I'll put some links down there to some of the information that I found I find I have found and you guys can go do the rest turmeric and black pepper I made supplements of turmeric and black pepper. I made like, oh God, so many pills. And these for the first, I'm still taking them now, but when I started treating my body, I was taking these like in 500 milligram capsules. I was taking these, I was taking like at least six a day, six a day. And then when I increase the, anytime I increase the herb, I'll decrease the herb or I won't take a herb, you know, but it's no more than 12 herbs a day. Like I said, and just listen to me good with a whole bunch of water. You may be going to the restroom a lot, but in the end, it's worth it when that next cycle come on and you're sitting here wondering how it's going to go down or how it's going to flow pretty much. And... You know, that's the confidence builder. When you start taking these herbal remedies and then you see the results, it helps to build confidence. It, and it helps you. It helps to build your faith. Okay. So another thing that I was concerned about being that I had just gotten out of the hospital, just had a blood transfusion. And I was told that, you know, when your blood hemoglobin, the iron gets to a certain level that your body it's having it has it has trouble getting oxygen to your organs and to you know throughout your body so everything can function like it should i never knew that you know i mean i knew it to a certain degree but nobody explained it to me like the doctors at this particular hospital had explained it to me so that was a concern of mine so what i started to do or what i did I researched herbs for heart health. Once again, there are so many herbs out there for heart health. You have to choose what's best for you. You know, try it. And if it works, stick with it. If not, you know, try it and move on to the next thing until you get the results that you're looking for or that you're feeling for in your body. Garlic is the number one thing. I made some garlic pills. And the some very, very strong garlic pills. And I take probably about three a day. Well, at that time, when I first got out of the hospital, I took like three a day. Ginger. I mean, cinnamon that I, I put in some capsules and I took a few of those. And basically, these three supplements, I don't take, I didn't take them every day, but I took them a few times a week. And lo and behold, when I took these a few times a week, the heart palpitations that I had, they stopped. And this was even before the blood transfusion. I did these heart health um, herb and spice remedies. And they work. For me, they work. And if you, I mean, ain't, there's no if. We have the same, we have red blood cells, we have white blood cells, we have the same organs and things of that nature. So if you take, you take these, these are guaranteed to work for you. It's just a matter of how often you need to take these to remedy or to help your situation if that makes sense now in reference to what i drank a lot of water of course i'm gonna do a video about water 
it's not gonna be, it shouldn't be that long, but basically there's some things, I think at the, the beginning of everybody's journey should be good quality water. Because if you don't have water that's in an alkaline state, to me, it's gonna be redundant to be drinking water that is not quality. And when I say it's not quality, the, it's not alkaline. The acidic level may be a six or a five, and a lot of people don't know we grab water thinking this water oh well i could take it as good while it is serving some type of benefit to your body is not doing it's not serving it as good as it should as a matter of speaking in a matter of speaking so good quality alkaline water which hopefully is a 7.0 or more because you know they have all this water out here that's seven the alkaline um alkalinity in it is like a seven eight or nine so you know you don't have to go out and buy water to get the alkalinity to that and i'll discuss that in another video however good quality water i drunk lemon juice i drunk beet juice uh i drunk wine well i still drink wine i have like probably a, a eight ounces of wine maybe three times a week or maybe even two times a week but just to get it in um, do your research and on all of these and basically you know wine is good for the soul all the stuff that wine has in it it's beneficial to the body you don't drink to get drunk you just drink for the healing and the nourishment of your body and Believe it or not, I'll bring it up a little later. The Bible speaks of that, a particular saint that was drinking, that has had drunk wine for the nourishment or some kind of di digestive condition that he had in his stomach. Now, next we're going to talk about foods, which is most important. There, when you have, when you're suffering from fibroids or you have a bleeding condition, the foods that you take in is critical and the reason that i say the foods that you take in is critical is because of the preservatives in the food people don't say this but i what i've experienced the preservatives in the food is what's making your condition worse it can either depending on the food you take it'll remedy the situation or it'll minimize the situation until it's fully remedied remedied or it will worsen your situation and you will be an unhappy camper apples i started out taking apples along with the beets i had apples and i had that at least apples at least three times a week the sweet red apples i took i ate those along with the apple peel uh yeah about two to three times a week Eggs, I had eggs, uh, let me think, probably like four times a week, two eggs in the morning, two, maybe three eggs in the morning for like four days a week. And that, that helps to build up protein. All these foods uh, would help to build up the hemoglobin in your body, the liquids and the foods, because you're looking, that's your main goal. It's going to do a whole bunch of other stuff, but... You, your main objective is to keep your body fully stored so that you won't have, you, you can get some relief, if not complete remedies to your, to your, your fibroid situation. I ate oatmeal, I ate bananas, salads, spinach, and I decreased the portions that I, um, I consumed. There's a lot of other stuff, but these are the main things that I took that I incorporated into my diet while I was taking the herbal rem herbal and spice remedies to help my body rid of fib uh, the fibroid symptoms. Now, there are some foods that I would say stay away from or minimize down little to none. Sugar being at the top of the list. I know it's hard to get around sugar because some of the things, a lot of the foods that we have, have sugar in it. 
uh, the natural sugar, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm talking about the processed refined sugar that for some reason, disease and conditions, they feed off of the sugar. I don't, I don't know the complete science behind it as of yet. And maybe I will research that a little bit later and convey what I find, but stay away from sugar. Minimize it little to none. Starches, uh, rice. I found when I was on my cycle right after the, the fibroid, no, right during the fibroids, the last bout in March, when I was, when I, my cycle was flowing, I don't know if it was the fibroids or the cycle, but when I had the flow, anytime I ate rice, it got heavier. It got very, very heavy. Anytime I drunk, I ate or drunk something with a lot of vitamins, vitamin C in it, it minimized it. So I started experimenting, you know, on my own little experiment around here. So starches, anything with a lot of starch in it, try to avoid it. And if you can't avoid it, small portions, very, very small portions. Chicken. For some reason, chicken breasts, I don't know if it's the hormones in the chicken or what, but that right there, I noticed with my body, when I was going through the motion, uh, when I was going through the flow, is that when I ate the chicken, a little time after, you know, maybe within an hour, it was, the downpour would start. So there was something going on in my body. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I know, depending on the food that I ate, I knew what made, made it flow heavy and I knew what made it lighten up. Soda, and I'm just gonna leave it at that reduce or I, mean, I, I would suggest you don't drink sodas but for some people who have to have it i think it's best that you wean yourself off of it processed foods nicotine and caffeine these are the things i think that if you are suffering from fibroids you need to get a handle on these things either reduce it take it in, take them in moderation or eliminate them all together at least until you can see you know, a change within your body, within the condition. So. Oh, one thing, another thing that I did notice when it comes to the, the heavy and the light flow of fibroids, when you take supplements that are high in vitamin C, in combination with like turmeric or any of the other herbs, you will notice a lighter flow. And I believe, you know, based on the experimentation on me, um, that yeah, having a diet high in vitamin C and iron would help your body to recover. Now, I don't know if the fibroids would completely shrink and go away. Only, only um, a medical profession, ugh, only a medical professional can confirm that. So what I tend on doing, I'll label this video um, and then I'll do a follow up video. So in my follow up video, as kind of an encouragement to somebody out there, I'm going to show you where I started at. And I'm going to show you where I ended up at in, in, re in regards to the fibroid situation. Um, like I said, I did a lot of fasting. I did a lot of praying. Prayed more than I fast, but I did it. Because the fibroids aren't a joke. And for those of us, you know, a lot of people don't like to go to the doctor because it's like, you know, it's bad. You're thinking, are you going to hear is bad news? But it's not a bad thing to go to the doctor because it can, going, seeking medical help can and will save your life. In all situations, maybe not, but in majority situations, it's important to seek medical consultation.
you know, because that's what really what your doctors and the medical professionals are there for. They're there to help you diagnose your condition and then point you to the best remedy, the point you to the best um, option of treatment. Now, I'm not one that believes in long term use of pharmaceuticals. So. If there is a pharmaceutical that's out there, no, not a pharmaceutical, I'm sorry. If there is a herb that is out there that can treat my condition, uh, let's use blood pressure, for example. And I'll do a video probably on that a little later. There are tons of medication pharmaceuticals out there that will treat blood pressure, that will help you get a handle on your blood pressure. But there is also a lot of herbal Herbs, I keep saying herbals. Forgive me, I'll, 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 I'll get it together. This is, this is the first video, but anyway, there are tons of herbs and spices out there that can help you manage your blood pressure as well. So in my line of thinking is, why would I take pharmaceuticals and then these natural remedies can do the same thing? The same thing with any other conditions. You know, you would have a pharmaceutical out there that can treat that medical condition. But when you do a little research and you read, they have herbs and spices out there that can do the same thing at a fraction of the cost. Now, you may have to take it a little longer or. Um, yeah, it may take a little longer. It's probably not as instant as the pharmaceuticals would be, but if you have time and if your situation is not critical, then you go over and, well, I, I'm not saying you, I will go over and take the herbal remedies versus the pharmaceuticals. And I have went through bouts of having high blood pressure and it was only for the moment because as soon as I went to either Walgreens to check my blood pressure or went to the doctor's office to find out my pressure was up, I'll come home, I remedy the situation, and guess what? When I go back to the doctor for a follow-up, I no longer have high blood pressure. And so I have a testimony on that as well. But I'm not gonna talk your ear off. This was meant to be a this was supposed to have been a short video on fibroid health, but I got to talk about some other stuff and got the remedy. So as I get to be a pro with these videos, I'll kind of reel it in and hone it in just to hone it in, just to give you guys exactly what you're looking for. You know, no fluff, no, no filler, no fluff. You know, just basically, you know, this is the condition, this is the herbal remedy, this is what it does, and this is how you take it, or this is where I got the information from. Um, don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe to this video. And I will, I guess, see you in the next video. Don't forget to look down in the comments and within the comments will be some helpful information. My email address is in the comments. So if you would like, if you would like for me to send you some of uh, the herbal remedies that I put together to treat my body, just send me your email, first name and your last name. And then what I will do, uh, I'm constructing a site and I, I have the links for the products and you just look at the products and let me know which one you'd like, if you'd like to try it. And for a gift of whatever amount that I put on the particular link, you just send that gift I'll send it off to you and then you go ahead about your business and try it. But um, remember to consult your doctor. I have to say this. I'm not a medical professional. However, I, and, and I'm not practicing medicine, but I'm practicing common sense as it comes to the health and well-being of the human body, my body. You know, we all have red blood cells, white blood cells. Our organs are the same, maybe a little bigger, a little smaller, but they provide, they do the same function. So basically anything that I find out that I think people need to know about because somebody's out there suffering, somebody's out there need answers, they, and they need it in a simplified form. So when you look at this channel, 
when I talk about things being in your health, your spiritual health, or your physical health, it's going to be in simple terms and understandable, I guess. You'd be able to understand, you know, you, you, you should be able to take it in, process it, and use it. But anyway, I'm running out of time. I'm talking too much. I feel I'm rambling on. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe, like, share. Uh, any comments, any tips, and anything that you have for me, put them down in the comments or you can send me an email. And if there's anything that you want me to discuss, if I have information on it, I'll discuss it. I'll, I'll make a video and I'll put the video out. But right now, I guess this is just the first video and there are more to come. I just got to get all my research and information together. But I'm big on the fibroids because... I've suffered from it. I have firsthand knowledge about the symptoms, the conditions, and how it makes you feel. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling at all. So any information that I have about fibroids, guess what? I'll do, I'm going to do video after video after video. And people just let me know if it works. If you, if you, if I send you something or if you find something somewhere, any of the herbs, and you take it consistently... Just hit me back. Let me know if it works for you. And you could be a testimony to somebody else to help somebody else. But anyway, I'm out. Stay safe. And thank you for giving me your time. <laughs>